the rumour mill round uh, Westminster is just full of the most unbelievable stories. Um, and because I'm now very old, um, I have to keep thinking, well, there were extraordinary stories, um, you know, milling around in the Thatcher era, in the Blair era, and everyone said, well, you you never, you never run those because uh, you don't dare. And it turns out um, none of them were true. Ian Hislop is our guest this afternoon. The play Spike is touring. It's on a national tour. It's just been in Glasgow. And Ian Hislop had a very late night, but he's doing ever so well. Uh, so <laughs> uh, if you were straight out of university or the army at the moment, Ian, do you think that the BBC would employ you? Would they give you a red carpet into the world of comedy? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think... Spike got a red carpet in. I mean, he basically had to hang around in the Grafton Arms with um, everybody else who wanted to get into light entertainment um, and find a path in. But in the end, I think he was just too good. Um, there was no way of stopping him. And I do think that's probably true. I mean, it's, it's a very sort of boring old man's view that there's no one any good anymore and you can't get in. Um, I think there are loads of people who are good and I think you still can get in. Um, and the, the the interesting thing about Spike's story is is by the end he's still furious with the BBC. I mean, he used to ring up Private Eye when I was first there because he had a, a long standing relationship with my predecessor and Peter Cook, who owned Private Eye, was a huge um, Milligan fan. I mean, literally, you know, the phone you'd pick it up and there'd be a voice on the end going "Bloody BBC," <laughs> and it would be Spike. I mean, he. <laughs> He wouldn't actually introduce himself. He'd just what, start ranting. What about um, your, um, Ian, what about your own relationship with the BBC? Because there's always a, a bit of BBC knocking in private eye. Yes. And I, I want to out myself as someone who has a subscription to your organ, as you refer to it. Uh, but um, there's also the absolute fact that you yourself appear on the BBC very regularly and you earn a yes. lot of money for doing Have I Got News For You? How, oh, how I thought you were about to say for very little. That, that, no, no, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> Obviously, the implication was there. Um, so how does that work for you? Um, I mean, very well, obviously. <laughs> yeah, no, it works fine. Um, I, I feel entirely free to criticise um, the BBC and I feel entirely free to support it um, if someone tries to abolish the licence fee. Um, I, I consider myself an independent voice. Um, my first big television work was um, for ITV. I worked for Spitting Image for five years. I mean, uh, that's, that's, that was my early break. Um, and I've done a lot of documentaries for Channel 4 and um, other people. I mean, I suppose I'm saying I'll work for anyone, which is... is yes, you certainly a, named uh, all of the main yeah, contenders. Very, very <laughs> careful to do <laughs> uh, all bases. exactly that. Um, what about the stuff that you know, Ian? And I suspect there are some things that I know that you also know that you wouldn't put in private eye because you couldn't. Does that ever keep you awake at night? Um... I really do think if I absolutely definitely know something, I will put it in. I mean, I think, um, again, uh, I think it's a slight myth with people say, you must know the most amazing stuff about people. And you think, well, I know what people are saying about people. Yeah. I don't actually know whether it's true. Um, and my problem, and, you know, it's, it's the problem of everyone, is is um, can you actually get anywhere near proving this? Mm. And, you know, with at the moment, as, as, as we all know, I mean, the, the rumour mill round uh, Westminster is just full of the most unbelievable stories. Um, and because I'm now very old, um, I have to keep thinking, well, there were extraordinary stories, um, you know, milling around in the Thatcher era, in the Blair era, and everyone said, well, you, you, never, you never run those because uh, you don't dare. And it turns out um, none of them were true which yeah. was a bit of a problem. Yes. Um, and, and so that um, that remains my point of view. And are you always being sued at Private Eye? I mean, I've heard you say that before, but but maybe that's just a, you know, kind of a broad brush generalisation. I mean, who's suing you at the moment? Um, no, we're not always being sued. Um, we used to be sued a lot for libel. Um, and uh, then the libel laws were changed, partly I mean, because of the Guardian's sort of um, heroic efforts, um, but I mean a little bit because of ourselves and the ludicrous cases we kept um, losing and <laughs> getting involved with. But nowadays, uh, you tend not to be sued for libel. We tend to get um, legal um, uh, um, uh, problems over confidenti confidentiality and privacy. Um, and we do get those letters. I mean, we've had two injunctions um, attempted in the last 
mm, four or five issues. So there there are people who are very keen. Just just explain. Not in, yeah, injunction would be somebody involved in a story contacting you or their lawyers contacting you to say we want to put the mockers on that. We, we don't want yes. you to publish it. Right. And uh, nowadays you you can do this by saying we not that this story isn't true, but this story is. Um, commercially confidential um, and so the only... worst of those are you know in in relationships between the government and outsourced providers where right. we feel that we have a right to know how public money is being spent and they feel they have a right not to tell you <laughs> how public money is being spent because it's a commercial deal with a, a, a private um, company so that's a real pain um, confidentiality and the other one is privacy because if you get before a judge and you just say this story may be true, but it's an invasion of my privacy and um, therefore no one can know about it. Yeah, that is that is frustrating. In, I can see that. In the end, Ian, I'm I'm not going to put words into your mouth, but it's hip hypocrisy that gets to you, isn't it? It's, it's hypocrisy and hypocrites. Um, yes. I mean, uh, that is the worst. I mean, the old um, 18th century satirists always said everything was... Um, what they were interested in was vice, folly and humbug. And I think that's probably still true. Um, we're less pompous about vice now. We're just you know, worried about being called judgmental. Um, but um, I think straightforward sort of theft or profiteering or bad behaviour is still, is still worth pointing out without being too scared. Um, but humbug is, is, is a great modern sin. Um, and um, it's, Private Eye has always been good at doing that, I think. Mm. Well, we'll let you go to perhaps take a couple more ibuprofen and reconnect with yourself. <laughs> I think that's almost defamatory in itself. <laughs> well, very good interview, Jay. Uh, was, he was excellent. He overrode the impact of a night in Glasgow very well, I thought. Uh, you can see Spike on in Glasgow, Richmond, Blackpool and at the New Theatre in Cardiff.